Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Excellent. Did you have a good time at Bash last night? Excellent. So my name is Annie, and I'm joined here by Jonas, and welcome to the world of SIP trunking. So over the next half an hour, we're going to be talking about SIP trunking, which is a product that we launched in March earlier this year. And we're going to be telling you what is it, why do you care about it, and then thankfully we are not only going to be talking to you about it, but Jonas is actually going to be showing it to you, which is going to be great. So he's going to help us set up a trunk from start to finish in less than 15 minutes. So with that, um, please text us your feedback. It's really important to us, whether it's good, bad, ideas, suggestions, comments, stories, whatever it might be. Um, so what is SIP trunking? And very simply put, SIP trunking is the ability to connect your enterprise to the PSTN for voice connectivity. And it obviously has two directions, and we call that on the way out, which is from the enterprise out to the PSTN through a Twilio trunk, we call that termination. And then coming back in, which is the ability to call a Twilio number, we deliver that, tr that call through the trunk out into your enterprise, we call that trunking origination. And now, what is the whole elastic part of the SIP trunks? And pretty much by providing SIP trunking over a cloud, it brings elasticity. And the elasticity is really the ability to be able to place calls when you want them, how you want them, and then only pay for them when you actually place them, not when you just have circuits reserved, which in this case, you really don't have to reserve anything for maximum concurrent sessions or peak sessions or anything along those lines. Now, why did Twilio actually get into the world of SIP trunking? Because in, in this case, you really don't need to develop an application to actually be able to use this product, which is something radically different than what we had before. Um, so the way the Twilio platform started, it was started, it was built for developers, as you know. And in that process, when we added voice connectivity to it, we started to interwork with a lot of carriers for SIP trunking. And we realized how cumbersome it was to actually set up these SIP trunks. It was a process that took anywhere from weeks to months. And we, we said to ourselves, well, this is something that we could r radically simplify for our customers, and we could provide value by doing that. And then uh, on the other hand, we also said, well, it's a platform that we know and love, and you can reuse the, exactly, the exact same platform for something that's more simple. So that's pretty much what brought us here today. So now we're going to talk about three features that I think makes this product extremely cool. And the first one is simplicity. And this is the ability to really, like we were saying, simplify SIP trunking for our customers and simplify it for configuration, for adding numbers to trunks, and for actually be, being able to place calls through a particular trunk. And we'll see that in, in the demo in a few minutes as well. The second cool factor that I think we have is global. We have a global reach with a local presence. And that's really the ability for termination to connect to any of the seven pops that we have around the world so that you can connect to the one that's closest to your infrastructure. So if you're in the, in, the UK, in the UK, you can connect to a European pop. If you're in the US, to the US pop. If you're in Sao Paulo, to the one in Sao Paulo, optimizing the call path for your calls. And then on the flip side for origination is the ability to buy phone numbers around the world and have incoming calls to those different phone numbers. And the, the benefit of that is they're only going to be dealing with a single provider rather than going out to new regions in the world and trying to find new carriers to actually establish ship trunks with. So one example that we have, um, LifeSize is a company that came to us about a year, a year and a half ago, and they had an on-prem video conference solution, and they wanted to take that to the cloud. And they had two major requirements for us. One of them was actually to have a global reach relatively quickly, and the second one was to enable non-video enabled endpoints to join these video conferences. So they came to us for our SIP trunking solution. And the, the great benefit that they saw was rather than going out and dealing with 12 different carriers around the world to get that global connectivity that they wanted, they could only come to Twilio and they, they, they managed to get that global connectivity. So it, it really shortened their, their time spent to actually launch this project out. So the third feature that we have, which I think is really cool, is what we have, disaster recovery. And it's not a simple disaster recovery, but it's an advanced disaster recovery. And this is where we really leverage all of the programmable voice stack of our platform. So let's say that for whatever reason, there's an issue with your infrastructure in your, in your enterprise. It could be something goes wrong, a cable is unplugged, or it's a simple misconfiguration. And you want to actually receive that incoming call, but your infrastructure is down. So with Twimmel and with Disaster Recovery, we give you the ability to build your own application to control that incoming call and never lose that customer call that's coming into your enterprise. So you can do pretty much anything you want. You can forward the call to a particular number, you can have it go to an announcement, or you can take advantage of really implementing almost a full IVR 
to be able to process that incoming call and manage it the way you need it for your business. So with that, I will turn it over to Jonas, who's actually going to show this to us. All right, thank you, Annie. Uh, hi, good morning, everyone. Um, as Annie said, my name is Jonas. Uh, I'm the tech lead for everything that has to do with the phone call coming into Twilio and leaving Twilio. And trunking is, of course, part of that. My entire team is right here. So if you want to talk to us afterwards, please uh, come up and say hi. Um, so I'm going to show you that everything that Annie was just talking about is indeed as easy as she claims it to be. So I'm going to just configure an IPPBX. And I have a soft phone on my computer. And we're going to make the phone ring. So that's the purpose of the demo. So the setup I have right now is I have an IPPBX, which is asterisk. It's the plain vanilla installation. I just installed it the other day. It has nothing really on it. I have a soft one running on the laptop. It's currently registered with my IPPBX, but it can't do anything. So at the end of this demo, hopefully, when I tried earlier this morning, I didn't get it to work, but we'll get it to work now. Uh, we're going to create a trunk. We're going to make sure that I can dial any cell phone. And we're going to later on make sure we can dial the opposite direction as well. Make sense? All right, Let's see if we can make that happen. So, the first thing we're going to do is to create a trunk. So, on your account portal, this is a normal screen, you have elastic zip trunking. And the first thing I want to do is just create a new trunk. I don't have a trunk yet, so I'm just going to create one. And like everything else, you have to call it Hello World. Now, there's also call recording here. You can, by just selecting the recording setting, decide whether or not you want to record every phone call in and out of this trunk. And that's all you have to do. Just flip that flag, and you have recording. But let's create that trunk. And I get a trunk. So the next thing we need to do is my IPPBX need to know where to send the traffic. So you need to tell the IPPBX, in this case asterisk, where to send the traffic when someone asks it to. So we need to give asterisk an address. Like anything else on the internet, it needs an address in order to be contacted. So we need to assign an address to your trunk so we can tell asterisk to send traffic over to your trunk. And the way to do that is just to create a new DNS name. Um, so here on the termination URI, you just come up with the DNS name. I'm just going to call it Signal. Hopefully, that's available. It is. Now, if I try to save this, it's actually going to complain. It's going to tell me, like, hey, you need to secure your trunk. Obviously, you don't want to leave your trunk completely open because you don't want to have unauthorized access spending all your money, essentially. So there's two ways you can secure your trunk. You can whitelist the IP addresses where you know your IPPBXs are. This is one way. And or, it's up to you, just regular username password. Nothing special about it. So I'm just going to do IP whitelisting. I'm going to have to create a new list because I don't have one. And I need to find my IP address, which is over here. Copy that one and <clears throat> call it asterisk. Great. So now that I have that, I can save it. So what we just did was we created a DNS name and assigned it to your trunk. So we can now send SIP traffic to this trunk. And that's all you need to do on the Twilio side. What I need to do now is to configure my IPPBX to actually send traffic there. And in this case, and I'm going to show you, I have nothing here right now. I don't know how many people actually know asterisk. Um, it's just one of the IPPBXs out there. This is the entire configuration I have right now. All it does is accept registrations from my phone, which is this client. That's all it does. So the first thing we need to do is to tell asterisk that, hey, I want you to be to peer with this trunk. So if someone asks us to send traffic over to this trunk. So of course, I don't remember all the typing I have to do. So I have copy pasted some stuff here. 
And the thing I'm going to change here is what I called the, um, the domain name that I just created for my trunk, which was signal.pstntool.com. And that's it. That's all I have to do. I'm going to tell Astros to reload that configuration. Now, the next thing I need to do is if you imagine your IPPBX kind of has two sides to it. One side is the side connecting to, for instance, carriers. And then on the other side, you have your users that are registered with you. So I just configured the side of asterisk going to the carriers, in this case, Twilio being the trunk provider. I also need to tell asterisk, now that my registered users ask you to do something, I want you to send that traffic via this trunk. So if I try to call now, asterisk can go like, I don't know what you're talking about, and I'm going to get an error response back. For that, there's a thing called dial plan. And I have prepared again. So I'm just going to put that there. Essentially, what it says is for any number that this client in this context dials, just take those numbers and send it across the peer that I call Jonas dash outbound. You can call it whatever you want, it's just a, a, an alias. So I'm going to reload that. And with that, I'm going to call Annie's phone. I better answer. And let's see. Uh, get sound on that card. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hello. And that's all it takes to set up your IPVBX and the trunk with Twilio to place your first outbound call. That's all you need to do, nothing else. Of course, we want to do it the opposite direction as well. It wouldn't be any fun. So I want to be able to actually call my soft phone from any number in the world. So there's two things to that. We go over to the Twilio side. Um, we have an origination settings on the trunk. So when someone actually access this trunk, we want to tell the trunk what to do with the incoming phone call. So when someone dials this trunk from a regular phone number, what are we supposed to do? In this case, we just want to take that traffic and send it to our IP PBX, right? That's it. That's how you connect the two dots. So I'm going to make it easy. I'm going to send it to extension 1001, because that's what my soft one is registered as. You can create very, very advanced dial plans with asterisk, but um, I'll leave that up to you. In this case, I'm just going to dial 1001. So now, if someone access this trunk, we're going to send all SIP traffic over to the asterisk box at that address. That's it. Of course, we need a phone number. So you go over to your number section. I'm just going to add a number. And it just so happened that I will have a 415 number associated with this account out of pure luck. And that's it. Now that phone number is associated with my trunk. So if anyone dials that phone number, it should end up on my asterisk box, which hopefully then will find my soft phone and my computer will ring. So Annie, if you could dial uh, 415-234-4163. Oh, no. Oh. So I copy-paste wrong here. So the call was rejected. And I know why, because I forgot to configure the asterisk side. We've got to do that first. So of course, we configured the Twilio side. We've got to reconfigure asterisk to accept the incoming traffic from Twilio. Otherwise, it's going to go like, I, I don't know what you want me to do. So let's do that as well. And the way to do that, and again, it all depends on your setup, what IPPBX you're using. In this case, what you need to do in the asterisk world is essentially tell asterisk to accept all the traffic from these IP addresses. Those IP addresses are on our web page. You know where the traffic is coming from. But that's one way to making it secure with asterisk to accept that incoming traffic. So I'm going to reload that again. So Asterisk actually likes it. And then again, once Asterisk received the traffic, 
I need to actually tell it what to do. So I'm gonna So, hopefully it actually works this time. Now we can try it again. All right, let's try it again. So, the number was, actually, I think I, I got it. it. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. Um, and that's it. So now we actually created a trunk, we signed a phone number to it, and we were able to call the soft phone. And that's it, if you remember to configure IPPBX as well. It's kind of important. Now, one of the things that Annie mentioned was that your trunk is global. And there's kind of two aspects to that. I'm going to talk about the first one first. Um, you can buy any phone number in our inventory and assign it to the trunk. So there's one way of being global. So I'm going to buy another number. And I'm going to pick something else, like, I don't know, Italy. Hopefully we have Italy, Italian numbers. We do. I'm going to buy that one, buy this number. And now it's on my trunk. So if any, oh, this is hard to read. Um, plus 39, 0958-100-183. And there's really no difference from the trunk perspective. You assign the phone number, you dial that, and there you go. You can hang up. I'm not going to answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. So you can associate any number that we have with this trunk, and we will follow the origination setting that you have. I mean, it's just a, nothing strange really about it. Uh, the other thing that uh, being global means is, and he had a beautiful map about all the data centers that we are in around the world. If you have a deployment in the US, you want to hit our US data centers. But what if you have your servers in Europe or in Brazil or wherever you are? You want to probably hit our data centers that are closest to you. And we created the DNS name signal.pstntooler.com, but that one also have regionalized versions, which you find under your network. So here's a list of all our different data centers. So for instance, if I want to send things to our data center in Ireland, because you have your computers in Europe somewhere, you just go signal.pstn.ie1, because that's what we call our data center, .twiller.com, and you will send that traffic there. And that's probably what you want to do. So that's the other aspect of being global. So one configuration, global reach. You can buy phone numbers and assign it to your trunk. It's not an issue. The last thing I want to talk about before handing it over to, uh, to Annie again is disaster recovery. So there's a couple of reasons that, uh, well, there are many reasons that your trunk Sorry, your IPPBX may not have a good day. Maybe your office have a network connectivity, maybe you misconfigured it, or maybe it's just crashed for some reason, who knows. So in that case, it kind of depends on the carrier what's gonna happen, but typically, if your server is down for whatever reason, the user may hear something like doo -doo -doo, like something like that, right? The number is not reachable or whatever it is. But that's not a very nice user experience. You want to take control of what happens if your servers goes down. And hopefully they won't. But if they do, you need to uh, address that. And one way of doing that is actually using the disaster recovery URL, and I'm going to show you how that's done. So I'm going to fake, I'm going to tell Asterisk to hang up when we get a call. Mm -hmm. And I used the error code 42, which is being translated to 500 error on the SIP side. And then it kind of depends on the carrier. We actually haven't tried this with Annie's phone, but we'll see. We if you it? dial that, the 415 we'll the number, number, or the Italian number, I guess it doesn't matter. So ask just now, and we see the log here. So her carrier now is like retrying, retrying, and eventually it's going to be probably be boo doo doo. Eventually. 
Okay. Eventually. There, there we go. go. You don't want that. You don't want that experience for your users. My IPPBX just crashed. So what can we do? The thing is, with the disaster recovery URL, you can hook it up to Twimmel. And I hope most of you guys know what Twimmel is. But it gives you the full flexibility to do whatever Twimmel can do. So you can set up your entire infrastructure. Let's say you have, welcome to my awesome company, press one to speak to sales, press two to and so on and so forth. You can do that via Twimmel. Or in this case, I'm just going to make it, make it simple. And if I can go to the browser, I'm going to use Twimmel bin here to create a simple static Twimmel. If you haven't used Twimmel bin, check it out. It's very good for trying out various Twimmels really quick. I can't type once. And in this case, I'm just going to say, hi, we are sorry, but our server isn't doing too well. Well, uh, call back later. That's it. So if I use this as my disaster recovery URL, and Annie, if you can call this one in just a second, paste that in there. See, thank you. So now, Asterisk is still going to return the error code, but what should happen is, of course, we should hit the Twimmel instead. Hi, we are sorry, but our server isn't doing too well. Call back later. Yeah. So not an awesome message, but it's better than getting the error signal in your ear, right? So that gives you control of what happens if your servers can't handle the load, for instance. Maybe it's a good reason you can't accept the phone call, because all, all your agents are busy. Well, use the disaster recovery URL, drop them into Twilio conference, and then your agents can pick them up from there later on. So there's one way of using uh, disaster recovery. Um, so just remember, plain Twimmel has all the functionality of regular Twimmel. And that's really all there is to trunking and setting it up. And I think we achieved what we were hoping to achieve. We could place and receive phone calls. We could use the disaster recovery. And I showed you how to do global reach. Thank you. So Annie. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you, Jonas. Um, so with that, I think we have about five minutes. We'll open up the floor for any Q&A, if anybody has any questions. And there's a few mics going around, so. Thanks. Hi. Uh, we've been using your system loads since March. It's been amazing. And oh, all awesome. our new customers have been putting onto it. But we're a competitor of life size that you mentioned earlier on. But I also want to move our old customers onto it as well. We can port numbers in the US, which is easy. That, that, that takes about a week or so. But um, on your website, you say that you can only port numbers within North America. Do you have any plans to allow that to happen in Europe? Do you know? Yeah, we're a completely wrong team to ask that question. Uh, I'm going to find you. If you can come up later on, unless we have a number team person in here. Ah, uh, Lisa's here. She's, a, she's an expert. There you go, Lisa, the PM. She's Thank PM you, Lisa. For <laughs> she's the PM for numbers. She'll be able to answer that question. Yeah, yeah, come up here. I got a mic there. Hi. You're not the only one. <laughs> um, so we've been doing some beta testing of porting in the UK, and we're hoping to be able to offer it uh, a little bit later this year. We don't have a specific timeline that we've like officially announced, but um, I can give you a card and you can email me. We can see if we can get you into that beta. Sorry? Awesome. Great. All right. Good. Any question for us? <laughs> Thank All right. We've got a couple of people up here. Okay. Mike, Jeremy, who's got the mic? This one? Hi. All right, there we um, go. So, yeah, outbound caller ID. What's the rules on a trunk setting? Whatever you want. Anything. So it's not like dialing out through Twimmel where you've got to verify. If you number. say hello world, it's going to be hello set world. Any yeah. number the, the only restriction is if it's a, um, a trial account, we need verified caller ID. Once you upgraded, you can type my phone number. We don't. Yeah. Thanks. Anything goes. All right, more questions up here. Later on. How you doing? Uh, yeah, it's a very nice product. Uh, just a question, are you, um, are you proxying the media? And if yes, are you doing it through the global data centers, or is that just through it for the signaling? 
So uh, signaling will always, uh, well, signaling and media in this case for trunking will always stay in the one region you send it to. So if you just send to Ireland, everything will stay there, including signaling. Now, the signaling doesn't matter as much because it's fast enough, so even though it's 150 millisecond delay, people are not gonna notice. But uh, media will always stay local, and signaling, unless you fall over to Twimmel, the signaling will stay local as well. All right, we've got a lot of questions up here. Hi there, uh, great product by the way. We've Thank just you. started using it and it's been fantastic, saving us a huge amount of time. Um, one quick question though, we're looking to uh, automate our provisioning, so mm -hmm. we wanna be able to automatically provision the trunks. I know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, so you're asking for REST API access. Yep. Yes. Um, Actually, the team and how we were actually done, uh, there was so much stuff for, for uh, Signal, we just didn't have time to do it. It's coming out, and uh, why don't you give any of Yeah, so right now what we have is we do have the ability to actually assign numbers to your trunk through the API, but we're building out the full trunking API very soon. Yeah. It's around right. the corner. So, yeah. we, we hear you. All right, okay, yes. Um, if you're doing a deployment or something and you have your asterisk instance in maintenance mode and it returns 503s, does that go to the disaster recovery? Yes. Okay. Yep. So if you're doing that, put another Twimmel, maybe have a default one when you do deployment, do sorry we're working on it or something, and then we'll, we'll take care of it. Cool. Can you talk a little bit about maximum capacities mm -hmm. and whether there's alternative routing into the enterprise that you might want? in a call center environment? So us sending traffic to you or you to us? Well, both ways. Both you know, ways. have alternative both. paths. Yeah. So one thing we didn't really mention was uh, capacity. Obviously, promise of the cloud, uh, you can send us as much traffic as we can. Obviously, there's you know, limits to that too. But we will enforce uh, CPS on your trunk. And you can get more CPS. You can buy that. By default, you get one CPS uh, if you don't ask for anything special, which turns out to be quite enough for many people. Uh, we have customers that have 100, 150 CPS, perfectly fine. Um, we don't care per se, we just have to boot more nodes if you ask for a ton. Uh, the opposite direction, we measure but we don't enforce. So we have actually been discussing this, not so much for our point of view, but maybe we should help you guys. Let's say if you could tell us, my system can only do 10 CPS, can you make sure you don't send me more so I don't have to go like, no, 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 I, I can't do it, because you're obviously gonna spend uh, resources on that. But um, as far as failing over, if you have multiple data centers, currently uh, there's only one origination URI that you can specify, so that's the one option. But uh, it's a good idea, and we have actually been discussing it as well, and who knows, it may be showing up very soon. <laughs> All right, we've got some more questions up here. Hey, how do you guys address uh, E911? E911? Ah, any. So E911 is something we're looking at. It's, um, it's gonna be probably around third quarter this year, and it's gonna be for routing calls out in the US, and we're also looking into Canada initially. You should talk to the guy right behind you. Yeah, he's our expert at 911. Can you talk about the media flow? So if you have an inbound okay. call coming <laughs> from Sweden um, and you're talking about a server in Southeast Asia on my side, yep. what's the media flow? Uh, it's going to be very poor. <laughs> um, there's no magic, unfortunately. Um, you know, uh, I don't know if you saw the presentation regarding our conference solution that our global is spent spanning around the globe and stuff like that. At the end of the day, if you dial a Swedish phone number, you will come through a media server in Sweden because that's where the carriers are, right, in this case. Uh, slightly depending. Um, if you have your IPPBX very, very far away from Sweden, we gotta send the media there. So it's gonna be that very long hop. So just as well as we are globally available everywhere, um, if you only have a single data center as well, we gotta send you the media. There's just no magic around it, so it's gonna be a very long hop. And it will not be as, as great as you would like it to be. Does it kinda make sense? I wish I had a magic answer for you, but there's no magic, unfortunately. Make sense? 
Yeah. So with that, we I can talk we'll... afterwards if you have more questions. We're running out of time here. Yeah, so that's all the time we have for questions. Yeah. Thank you. But um, I do yeah. want to point out, um, again, Jonas and Annie, we're here all day. We also have a booth in the community hall where people are also able to help you. And the whole voice connectivity team is here. If you want to reach out to any one of us, um, we'll be happy to, ha to help. So thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Thank you.